We owe that to the families. We owe this to these, to these young kids, to these young um, adults. We owe it to them. And we are absolutely dedicated to make sure that that happens. Hello, folks. Uh, long time no speak. It's been a few days. I've been in hiding. I feel like I've upset a few people with uh, my last video. So I've been in fetal position in the corner of my room for a few days. Um, and I've managed to... Um, face the music now um i think i was a bit loose with my words and didn't think it through that, that, that'll happen with adhd you know and that sounds like an excuse but i'm telling you that is why that's why i when i talk i sometimes like have massive sometimes i just can't think of the word but i but i have to be so careful because i can come out with things that I don't mean to, and um, and I really need somebody to, um, so you know, like, probably a lot of you guys have got a, a partner at home, maybe you haven't, maybe you've got a good friend that you can turn to, well, I don't have either of those things at the moment, I, well, I'm not, I very much doubt I will be having a partner again because I just can't cope with it. It's just too much hassle. It really is just, oh, I just find it stressful. Um, but, um, and my, my bestie, well, she lives quite a long way away and we've just kind of lost touch. Um, it's just life's got in the way um, and yeah so i'm kind of out on a limb and so i really do need a moniker you know like in friends when rachel i've done this with my sister before my sister is monica and i have to ask her about things and i need a moniker in my life to make decisions for me because um I need somebody to basically be able to double check my work to make sure I'm not saying something that's going to... I think I just... I've just made all these videos. I've got literally a billion of them, OK? Maybe not literally a billion, but an awful lot. And I feel really overwhelmed and I need to put them out. And I kind of felt a bit like... Just just put this one together and just send it out. And I, I listen and I did listen it and I was like, oh, is that okay? And I just kind of I suppose I just didn't expect so many newcomers to pop up and I know some of my regular folk would know me well enough to know that I'm not the sort of person that gets on the mic and starts slagging people off that's a, that's a British term it's not anything that might sound I don't know if that translates I've been I've fallen foul to saying <laughs> saying things that did not translate well when I when I did Camp America before actually um, and then I ended up coming home with lots of American terms because I had to change and some of them I still use interestingly enough 28 years ago no sorry 20 years ago anyway let's get down to business so um i'm gonna also i'm i've set up membership and i'm going to i'll do a separate video about that but i think that might be a good way that i put videos out and i can get a bit of feedback from my members and they can kind of guide me a little bit if I need it. I mean, I don't need it all the time. Um, um, but sometimes, I've got, don't bombard me with with, it, with advice because I, that would make me go back into fetal position. I promise you, I'm not. I. Um, but but if you know, I might have to ask sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I'll do a separate video on that anyway. Um, but now, 
this as you would have seen from the thumbnail is if you've seen the thumbnail i think it does it only come up when if you go to look if you if you're just scrolling through well, they don't come up do they because i don't really do that i'm i'm quite uh i'm tar i'm i target i target specific things um so i think this video is interesting regardless of whether it's relevant but some people have sort of speculated about the possibility i think L lana did of um any of the these students being becoming confidential informants due to things like noise complaints or any, there could have been alcohol offences. I mean, thinking about the younger ones, any of the ones that are under 21 could have been in danger of something like that, but would it would it really have happened for alcohol? Like it's, it's more likely that it's gonna be something to do with drugs. And when we look at, this is, it's about this young man, Andrew Sadek. And that's his mum and dad, and they're absolutely lovely. And, you know, he lost his other brother, was killed in a train accident. So they lost they, their child less now. This is so sad. Um, but, yeah, and we look at, at this. The way the um, other police officer, I don't know who what his name was, but he stood where I've got my finger right now. Can you see that? No? opposite sort of Zana um, and he was talking about um, her going before a magistrate and things and I was like this sounds a bit heavy what the hell what are they talking about so um, yeah it does make you wonder and also with Ethan I do wonder because you know it does seem like he may have been whether you think he was there most of the time or he'd moved in i personally think he'd moved in because of how because of a couple of things but i've forgotten the name of that the um sigma chi leader what they call deans or something like that um oof, what was his name off somebody offshoot i can't remember his name um you know, the guy who spoke with Brian Enton on and said he'd got to go to his lecture. But he says, he said, Ethan's round here all the time. And, but he said he didn't sound very enthusiastic about it, actually. Um, he, he knew Zanna, he seemed bright about that. And Ethan's round here all the time. Um, so, you know, what happened? Did he get kicked out? Did did he fall out with them um did he owe people money because also at the vigil there seemed to be some uh hunter had said something about him i mean he could have he could have been asked to say that at that vigil because it was an unusual thing to say or he might just be one of those people who like myself who don't think before they speak um and he said about him borrowing money and him owing, you know, he was just joking about it and talking about small amounts of money. But you never know, there could have been more to it. And and also we had um, Mr. Canodal, Jeff Canodal, um, sort of him saying that Zana was sort of looking after him a bit. So, and if you notice, the mainstream media really seemed to, and everybody seems to pick the photos of him when he was younger um but he did start to look a little bit more rough around the edges not in a you know he'd just grown a moustache and looked older and he looked a bit unkempt but that students god i think all the students well, i definitely did and my friends did and so i'm not i'm not saying it to throw shade on him so please don't anybody get the wrong idea but what i'm saying is is it just that is it just being a student or was there more to it and you know did and, and to be honest i would believe more it'd be more likely that they would choose 
a boy over a girl in a situation like that and I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure the statistics would bear that out. So anyway, this is just speculation and I am not throwing shade at anybody. I'm the absolute last person to do that. I have a history myself of drug use. I, I've never dealt drugs, but I don't judge anybody who's done a I don't I don't judge anybody it's just not the way I am I'm very open-minded so please if you're listening do not get the wrong idea um and you know we've got everything could look I guess in in if you look at everything through a certain lens it could look a certain way you could argue but there are sort of things that make me wonder um, you know and this, him looking so incognito there, he, he really doesn't look like Jack Decor at all, to be honest. Um, and we've been told it is okay, but if this was a situation where it was anything to do with um, drug um, being informants or anything like that, then they're not going to tell us who it really is if it, if it's somebody they don't want us to know about, aren't they? Um, it probably is just Jack to call. Oop. So, and then we got this fella, this older fella who seems. I'm going to have to say it. He seems a bit sus to us. And uh, shout out to uh, Crime Circus there. Hmm. It could just be Adam's dad, God knows. But oh, why would any dad... I suppose they might be in the local pub. I, I don't know, because I'm just thinking about when I was a student. I mean, your parents are not going to be there, are they? They're not at your... So you're not likely to be with older people. Like, if I was in my hometown and I'd sort of come back for um, the holidays, then it's possible that I would be speaking to an older person in in um but i know some people thought it was fry he does actually look like some he looks like somebody that i am not yet able to discuss it might not be him but he looks like somebody so that's going to be cryptic and someone's going to moan about that but sorry sometimes things just drop out of my mouth um and it could be a lot worse. So, I mean, I I do not feel like he wasn't with them. He's clearly with them. I don't understand why people think he's not with them. If he wanted to do something, he could have done it then when he's walking along that dark road. I I I know what how many people are suspicious of him, and maybe maybe, I mean, it certainly seems odd that he pissed off to Africa afterwards but that could mean that he was scared of something who knows one thing I wanted to point out is that at the vigil Dylan's um speech she says about and I just wonder if different people were asked to say different things because she says about the pink jacket that um Maddie used to wear all the time and some people have speculated that this is a jacket that that Maddie's wearing a jacket. It's just the style was wearing a too big style. I don't think that she's the kind of person who wears a jacket like that one that she's wearing there. I think that's not her jacket, and I wonder if she lost her jacket whilst she was out because she's she's very drunk, and I could lose mine without being very drunk. But I've definitely lost many an item whilst being inebriated. So. Um, I feel like there maybe is a purpose for him being there. It could be that he, he just wanted to get a lift with them, a ride home, and they were trying to lose him because they were just like, oh, he's always getting a ride, you know, oh, he's always getting, I call it a lift, because a ride means something different. So I'm going to say lift. Um, he's, always, um, he's always getting a lift home, so they like rant they didn't look like they were scared of him or anything i think he was just probably um podging 
po- not podging, um, cadging, cadging a lift, just trying to get a lift when, you know, a, a ride when you've outstayed your welcome. That, or it was his job to stop them going to the home, which I'm not very convinced about that, but it's a possibility. Or um, he was trying to, he was watching them to make sure they were okay, which means that there's a reason, which, and I don't think it's just a, I mean, what if what if Steve asked him to do it? I think that's the sort of thing Steve would do. Like, why was she worried about going back there if she really was worried about going back there? I don't know. I feel, I feel like there was a purpose to him, his... He, but it could have literally been he wanted to catch a ride with them and then they went off without him. Uh, I don't know. Whoop. And do we know for sure it's Jack Showalter anyway? Because it wouldn't be the first time that people have been misidentified on CCTV type equipment. Um, so this is all a bit odd, isn't it? This situation and this whole... Um, I'm just going to go past this bit and I'll come back to them. The whole plain clothes, alcohol thing. And here, this is... This is nothing, this is just an aside. But look what it says in this this police report. This is for either on CNN or Fox or something like that on a news report. Um, it says, officers, the police report says, officers stopped the students for the unrelated alcohol offence after they noticed the young adults were swaying from side to side and one fell down as he walked across the street. Did, did one of them fall down? I know you can't see that in... God, I'm uh, obviously talking too fast. I'm losing my breath there. Um, it, I didn't see that happen, and I. it must have been off camera if it did happen, and I did not get the impression that they were particularly drunk at all. Um, they just did not see me. They, they could have been sober for all I knew. I didn't think there was anything that seemed drunk about them um so i would have been surprised if one of them fell down i, I mean you can easily trip but no i think that, that, that that's a blatant lie then in the in a police report isn't it so that's dodgy um but yeah there's this quad cities task force and look in 2021 zero fentanyl pit pills were seized in 2022 we've seized 6288 you might have seen this before on other videos but it's worth discussing now given that we're looking at can the possibility of confidential considering the possibility of confidential informants if it's not something that you agree with i won't be offended if you stop this video right now and go and watch something that you feel is more your sort of thing because it's just no point in people <laughs> watching i mean i know some people hate watch don't they but um, i'm never in any of these videos am i saying this is what happened i'm just considering you have to speculate to accumulate um so and they introduced a canine program in 2022, um, a, a new drone program was introduced in 2022. And it can't be a coincidence. They've seized all these pills, um, drug policy grants. Um, this is, I mean, they're calling it drug policy grants. And then they're talking about underage drinking in this. And to me, that's not drugs. This is about drugs, and they are making it look like it's about alcohol offences. But there is more to this than meets the eye, because the daily log leading up to this um, absolute horror show, this absolute tragedy, um, there were, I think it was three times that they went 
to houses regarding drug offences. Um, that's not relevant. Hold on. No, right, we've gone past it. Oh, this is interesting, I thought, that their 911 service is a Pullman service. The There's an organisation called Whitcomb 911. Um, dispatch, they contract all dispatching and emergency 911 services in Pullman. So that I found a little bit interesting. Um, and I'll look at that another time. So, so let's have a look at the video. So this is uh, Andrew's mom. And this is a disbelief that the deputy who recruited her son as an informant is running for sheriff. This is him. He didn't get it. They had a campaign against this this uh, <clears throat> this fella. And there's the dad. And the mum and the dad are absolutely lovely. They are, unfortunately, you're not good. You can see the video if you click in the description or the comments, but... It's just going to be audio with pictures here, so I won't be offended if you decide to go and um, to, yeah, they had lots of campaigns. And you'll see a picture of him and his friends, and I think they're wearing these T-shirts, actually, in the picture. Not him and his friends, just his friends then. Um, yeah, if you go and watch the video, it's fine, um, or listen to it here. So just to clarify, yeah, it's 2014 and he was a student in North Dakota, but his body was actually found in Minnesota. So, um, yeah, I'm sp sorry, spoiler alert, but I, I didn't pick up on that during the video and I maybe I just missed it when I listened to it about 200 times um, editing, but... Um, that's very possible. But I just wanted to point that out because I'm like, oh, my God, wow. I mean, I guess it obviously could have... Anyway, I won't, I won't say any more. So, um, yeah, have a listen. Five, only five minutes long. When many of us hear the term confidential informants, we often think of... When many of us hear the term confidential informants, we often think of mobsters wearing a wire to turn in their bosses. All right, but in reality, as 60 Minutes investigates, they include young college students that were busted for selling small amounts of drugs. And in some cases, there are tragic consequences. Here's a part of the investigation that aired last night. Two felonies. This young man, Andrew Sadek, was caught on tape by another confidential informant making two sales for a total of $80. Weber has called Sadek in before charging him to present a choice. Agree to work as a CI, wear a wire, and make undercover drug buys from three people twice each, or be charged with two Class A felonies. Potentially, the max is 40 years in prison, $40,000 fine. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you're probably not going to get 40 years, but uh, is there a good possibility that you're going to get some prison time? Um, if you don't help yourself out, yeah, there is. Okay? That's probably not a way to start off your young adult life and your career, right? So, Sadek took the deal. Um, Weber told us most students do. Part of the agreement he signed? Keep the whole thing strictly to himself. You can't tell anybody you're working for me, obvious, for obvious reasons. An award-winning student of electrical technology, Andrew Sadek did as he was told never told any of his close friends about being an informant, never called a lawyer, and didn't breathe a word to his parents, Tammy and John Sadek. The Sadeks are a ranching family, still struggling with the death of their older son in a train accident years earlier, leaving Andrew an only child. If Andrew had told you that he was thinking of becoming a confidential informant, what do you think your reaction would have been? <laughs> Well, he'd have gotten him a lawyer and told him no. He'd never heard of such a thing, you know, yeah. using college students for 
snitches or whatever you want to call them, stool pigeons, or I don't know what do you call them, you know. There's no parent that I know of who would allow their child or want their child to serve as a confidential informant. To set up a drug deal. Yeah, I mean, it's too dangerous. No, no, I wouldn't want my child to do it. Lance Block is an attorney in Tallahassee, Florida, who opposes using young people caught for relatively minor offenses as confidential informants. These kids are being recruited to do the most dangerous type of police work. They're going undercover with no background, training, or experience. They haven't been to the police academy. So they are basically doing the same work as a trained undercover cop? Absolutely. Then one night, a few weeks shy of graduation, security cameras snapped these pictures of Sadek walking out of his dorm at 2 a.m. on a Thursday morning. A day and a half later, he had not come back. We got a call from the campus at about noon on Friday. He went Still missing. completely unaware of their son's work as a confidential informant, Andrew's parents were soon on campus making a public plea for his return. We love you and we want you. We need you to come home. Everything will be okay. There were searches, prayer vigils, and then, two months later, the worst news possible. Andrew's body was discovered in a river near the campus. His backpack weighted down with rocks, its straps tied together across his chest. Did they tell you what the cause of death was? Gunshot to the head. A year and a half later, that's about all the Saddocks have been told. No one has been charged in Andrew's death, and the gun that killed him has not been found. Police deny he was involved in any CI operation the night he disappeared and have suggested to his parents that he may have shot himself, a possibility they say is inconceivable. They're convinced their son was murdered as a result of his work as an informant, and they want the confidential recruitment of young offenders as CI. Narcotics Canine Search, 500 block of West 3rd Street at 2.40 p.m. No report. They just do a canine search. What? That's... And don't write a report on it. Seems highly irregular. Pi Kappa Phi. Hi-Fi, 7.43 on a Friday. EMS Fire and Law responded to an unconscious person. They didn't make a report on it. They got all those people out. Somebody must have made a report. Patient reported to PRH. Controlled substance problem. Pizza Hut. Oh, we've got another narcotics canine search. So that's two in a couple of days. Surely that's that seems like a bit of a an unusual thing to happen. I mean, my hometown's about the same same size as Moscow, and I can't. I've never known them ever having a canine search. Not that I know of. Quarter past ten in the morning at Wicksfield. Let's find out where Wicksfield is. A oh, west. Ah, Guy Wicksfield. I thought there was three. <clears throat> yeah, there was another canine search. And that was less than half an hour before the bodies were discovered, however that ended up happening. I've been wondering today if the reason it was they were discovered at that time was because that was the reason that that was when Dylan 
Orr and Bethany returned home. They'd been somewhere all night. Like, I don't know, sometimes people just end up sleeping where a party is. Or, you know, they're with some... Just ended up, you know how it happens. You just end up crashing somewhere. Or it could have been organised that they were at friends' house. I don't know. I, I don't know, and I don't know if that's the case. But logic would dictate that they had got home to find this horrendous <coughs> bloodbath. But it could have been, it seems that it was contained to the two two rooms, so they may not have initially been able to figure out what had happened. And if they couldn't access Ethan's room, because if they're downstairs, I mean, most likely you just shout upstairs rather than going up there. I mean, think about what, I know they're not teenagers, but they're virtually teenagers. But think about what teenagers are like. They just, they don't just shout. They don't, they're not going to go all the way up the stairs unless they've got a really good reason so they probably shout Kaylee and Maddie and maybe ring their phones but with Zana they try and access her room but why would they why wouldn't they just assume that she's not there I mean they could have got there a bit earlier and just assume nobody's back yet and then did they hear a noise in there I mean, were they, were they still, was someone still alive in there? What reason, unless they wanted, unless they were thinking, well, is she in there? Because her car's here. Hmm. Just speculating. The fact that the car's there would give them the impression. That, and I, it does make me wonder why their vehicles weren't there. I mean, maybe they got dropped off. They left their vehicles wherever they were before. Maybe they sort of drank too much overnight, didn't feel safe driving the next day. Somebody dropped them off. A taxi dropped them off. Um, but I don't believe that they don't have vehicles. I've looked at... Um, at um, Bethany's background and her family have got three vehicles themselves. So for them, and dad's a dentist, for them not to, um, I don't think it's likely that they wouldn't have bought Bethany a vehicle. And when I've looked at um, what the, the video with the girl who talks about WSU and being at WSU, I know this isn't WSU, but this is the same same um, consideration that you'd have to have. She said you need a vehicle to live here. You have to. You need a vehicle. I don't. These are not girls who wouldn't have a vehicle, and we know Dylan did anyway. So the fact that their vehicles aren't there makes it seem like they may have left their vehicles somewhere else and got dropped off. Now that could have happened the night before. But equally, it could have happened the next day. And if they're prepared, if the police are prepared, or law enforcement, the authorities are prepared to disguise the fact that Dylan was on the second floor initially, and I mean, they initially disguised that fact. They initially let her, wanted us to believe that she was downstairs until it was clear that people knew she wasn't. Um, if they are prepared to change the timeline, if they're prepared to change the model of the car, um, if they're prepared to say that everybody's asleep and then we discover they're not asleep, if they're prepared to do all these things, then are they prepared to say that someone's there that's not there? Mm, that's what you've got to wonder. Anyway, this K9 search was just before the crimes. There was another controlled substance problem literally half an hour before 
the homicide call at 1156. So glad they took a report, eh? Um, yeah, so E.D. Street, East D. Street and North Main Street. And then they've got a suspicious person at two o'clock in the afternoon, report of poss possible drug dealing. I mean, they've taken a report for a dog. This has got to be Murphy, hasn't it? At seven o'clock. Stray dog in custody. They don't take a stray dog into custody usually, do they? Requesting assistance. Oh, we've looked at that before. Locating dog that was dropped off at a shelter. And people have assumed that is Murphy. And then we have a stray dog that's been taken in custody and for, and they've actually taken a report. I'm sure there's no other ones where they've taken a report with animals. You know it's something important when they've taken a report. I mean, who knows if other things are important or not, but do you know what I mean? Like, they cover their asses, basically. There was another unconscious person. This time they were actually an unconscious person. Oh, this is on the next day. Now, hold on. Now that, so went. Now, hold on. It was reported at 9.24. But then it mon the next day at 3 a.m. What? It was reported at 9.24 and nobody responded till 3 a.m. Is that what that means? <laughs> 